tonight. Welcome. Welcome. All right. I have a subject for you because I want to do a recap of all that we have covered in the last three Bible studies. So I need three volunteers real quickly. Larry, thank you so much. Come here for a second. Uh, Dad, come here. Dad, come here. Lisa, come here. Lori, come here. Okay. This is what we've been talking about the last three studies. And, to and, and today is going to put everything to perspective. Go over here in the center, uh, Lisa. Right in the center. All right, ready? Okay. Larry's going to represent what we talked about three weeks ago. Moving from darkness to the light. Amen. Lisa is going to represent what we talked about because before these two things happen, this needs to happen first. Larry represents what we talked about three weeks ago, moving from darkness to the light. Then when we receive, when we turn to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, then all of a sudden we have this desire to serve and be a witness for Jesus. So the next one was serving God. So Lisa represents serving God. Then last week, we talked about when you're serving, because the disciples wanted to serve, they followed Jesus around for three years, but they didn't have that boldness and courage to help them propel, to propel them to move forward. So what's needed? The, this, this, ex, this thing that's going to boost them up, the power of the Holy Spirit, fire in them. And so these three represent the last three Bible studies that we talked about. Now, all these three that we represent last time, tonight represents living with focus so that this could stay ignited. We can continue to serve and be witnesses how we need to be, and the light will never leave us. You, they, we need to stay focused with the things that are coming. You may be seated. Thank you. Now, so tonight it's about focus because a lot of us, have these desires that we want to do what we need to do. But you know what? We get derailed somewhere around, along the way. We lose focus. We want to do what we need to do, but somehow, some way, we get unfulfilled. We lose. We take the eyes off our prize, and we take the eyes off of Jesus, and all of a sudden we decide to do things our way, thinking that this is the way we should go. We get derailed. We, we get easily off track. The train is going right, and all of a sudden, something happens. A little storm comes, a little pebble gets in the way, a little obstacle comes, and we get off track, and we don't understand what's going on and why we can't hit the target as we should, why we keep, we keep missing on the target. And so tonight, I'm trying to bring this all together so that you can hit the target with a focused mindset. You have to be focused. And focus is an important part of a Christian walk. Turn into your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. You'll see what I'm talking about. Because a lot of times, we, as you're turning to Proverbs chapter 4, a lot of times we want to start eating right and exercising right, changing our diet, having a good lifestyle and that, and somewhere along the way we lose focus. We start the New Year's right, we want to write a book, or we want to read a book, and we lose focus. We want to tune in online like some of these viewers are doing. You know, I got to stop the 8 o'clock thing, and, and uh, I got to do what I got to do. And you know what? And somewhere along the way, we lose focus. We want to go to school, but we start the, the semester somewhere halfway, we lose focus. We get married. And then all of a sudden, we want to do things our way. We still think we're single. We're instead of like living married, and somewhere along the way, we lose focus. We get hired with our new job, a big $20,000 increase, and we're doing great for two months. All of a sudden, we lose focus, and we get sidetracked. We don't get the, the bonus that we were looking for. Focus is what I want you guys to really f concentrate on tonight. And here we're going to talk about in... Chapter 4, verse 25. Chapter 4, verses 25. And we're going to read all the way through 27. 
because I want you to have, in everything that you do, I want you to have uh, your, your eyes straight on where you need to, s- to have them. Number 25, it says, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from your evil. Amen. So, a lot of us, we complain. Oh, the person this and the person that. You know what I'm convinced? You know what I'm convinced as I continue to live this thing called life? I'm convinced that a lot of these things that we're complaining about, that we're complaining about our spouse, or we're complaining about our coworker, we're complaining about our brother, we're compl- complaining about our, our boss, a lot of these things that we're doing is like, well, we just finished reading, we don't have our eyes focus on, the, on what we need to focus on. It's the, it, the conclusion of the matter is God is more interested. Hear me what I'm about to say. God is more interested in changing you than he is in changing the person that you want to change. I'm going to say that one more time because you guys are processing it. No, no way. God wants us both to change. Yeah, but he really wants to focus on changing you and you shut up and stop trying to change them I know I knew I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens so that's okay I'm not my feelings are not hurt but I really want you to have something what I'm about to do today because this gun this BB gun is not loaded it's a BB gun okay the illustration the illustrations that uh, we're having sound equipment uh, uh, issues, if you can tell. But, and something needs to be changed. We spent $2,000 on new equipment, and it's still not working. And I believe it's the setup that they have here in this church. But anyway, we'll move on with that. This gun right here, if I were to right now aim somewhere without using the scope that's here, if I were to aim it without using the scope, I would probably miss my target. The scope's purpose is to have pinpoint accuracy that you can look through there and hit the target exactly where you need to hit it. And what a lot of us are doing is we're, we're, we're so busy, we're so busy that we're not hitting the target right. We're so busy that we're not focused on hitting what we need to hit. And so what's happening is we, we have this loaded gun, the word of God in us, and what's happening is we're moving around and we're just shooting everything that walks. And we're not really hitting the bullseye where we need to hit. And you know why we're not hitting it? Because we're not focused. If I were to get this magnifying glass, not now because it's nighttime, but if I were to get it at night, I mean at daytime outside with the hot burning sun, And I were to tell you, hey, I need you to look at the rays from the sun. And I need you to put the leaf right in front of it. And with the rays from the sun, it's going to burn the leaf. And as you're doing that, you're like, oh, okay, is that what you want me to do? Yeah, that's what you want me to do. So all of a sudden, you get the uh, the, the magnifying glass, and you put it next to the leaf. But you start looking around somewhere else, and you're like, you put, you put your magnifying glass down. Hey, 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 you're not burning the leaf. And you said just to put it there, and it will burn. At the proper time, when the heat connects with the, with the magnifying glass, and you're focused on leaving it there, leaving it steady, 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 right on the target, the leaf will eventually burn. But what's happening is we put the magnifying glass down, or we'll look at the sun. We'll say, hey, can you burn a little hotter? Or we're like, eh, this is not working. And we quit right in the middle of where God wants us to focus on. Your focus determines your reality. So when life gets a little blurry, you need to adjust your focus. The, the, there's many distractions that are going to come your way, and I'm going to talk about how to handle them. There are going to be a lot of them coming your way. It's the devil's agenda to help you with the, uh, to, to bring these uh, uh, distractions to you. It's a trap to d- derail you. But we know 
that if we stay focused in the Lord, in the Lord and we stay focused in the word, we're going to get what we need to get. It's kind of like the prophet in the story of the book of Nehemiah, the prophet Nehemiah. He was on the wall building the wall in Jerusalem. And many people were trying to make him come down from that wall and focus on other things that are going on in life. Nehemiah was so gun ho focused that if he did not have this mindset, he would have quit building the wall and there wouldn't have been no wall in Jerusalem. Thank God that Nehemiah stayed focused to his duty of what he needed to do. Now, I, I also have this other seven ways of how to stay focused and to stay productive in life's purpose. Because let me tell you what I mean here. One of the things, this is going to be like Sunday school here today. One of the things uh, that I really want you guys to stay focused on, this is a rope, right? You guys see this, right? This is your life expectancy. Look at that. Your life expectancy. You know that we were supposed to live forever. Our spirit, our soul, when we die, somehow, some way, we were supposed to live forever. Amen? Amen? Okay, so if we were designed by the creator to live forever, we've we got all this. All this. Don't worry about it. We got all this. S lifetime of years to live. Look how much space. It's carried over there. All the way over. I mean, just, I mean, I mean, look at this. It just continues. All right, drop it now for a second. A lot of years. We were created to live forever. But you know what puzzles me? You know what puzzles me about the Christian people? I expect this from the non-believer because they don't have the word. I expect it from the, from the non-believer who they don't have faith. I expect it from the non-believer who does not have an eternal perspective to life. This is really your life here on earth. This is really your life here on earth. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, whatever. What amazes me is that we are somewhere here, and if you're like already like me, this is like 90, you're already like halfway here already. So if you're here, <laughs> what's so funny, it's hearing people talk. And that's why I always tell my son, it's no big deal. <laughs> well, dad, this, this, and that. It's no big deal. Well, let me save money over here and save more money over there. I don't have nothing against saving money. Let me have a 401k investment here. Let me lose sleep for three days because I got to follow that stock. Let me do it so I can live right here real good. Or let me graduate from college, marry somebody in these like 15 years, have two babies, and then save a little money so that when I retire right here, when I retire at 65 years old, right here, I'm going to have 10 years of traveling. <laughs> this is all you got. Instead of focusing on this, You're focused on this. Instead of having an eternal perspective in your life, instead of focusing on that, you're focused on this. You're focused on what's temporary. You're getting all huffy and puffy because you weren't given that position that you were supposed to be in that job for another two or three years. Oh, uh, I don't have this, I don't have that. You hear people talk. And you know who's the mature Christian? Who's the one that's really hungry for wisdom? Because, man, I, I, I've been stupid too. 
And and when you're young, you're stupid. And but when you're fifty, you you should you better grow up a little bit. And so you know when when I hear grown people talk about like when they're like talking like if they're eighteen years old, it, do yourself a favor, get more wisdom. Get more wisdom, so you can live with a mindset that focuses on things that really matter. Because when you're focused. It's an ability that's going to help you live like today. Honest to God, may God be my witness and strike me dead. Today, I, I felt like around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, I was like, what's wrong with me? I have too much peace. This ain't fair. This is not fair to live this way. Why do I have this amazing peace? And all these people, you can't even stay three seconds in a red light. Beep! Everybody's in a hurry. Everybody's stressed. You know, getting high on drugs, uh, getting their nicotine fix, doing the things that they got to do, as opposed to saying, you know what? I don't have the strength to do what I got to do, but I'm going to focus on this. And I'm going to help, I'm going to have the word help me. And I know that with the word in me, not you by yourself, but you with the word in you, I can do all things. You can do all things. So I ask you tonight, my brother and my sister, can you at least remember this when you leave tonight? Can you remember that no matter what's happening to you right here, you got Millions of years coming. You're going to live in eternity. One way or another, in heaven or in hell. But can you focus more on the eternal perspective on things? I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Who cares that you're not happy? You're not supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be at peace. You're supposed to handle your storms with joy. You're supposed to rise above them like an eagle. Yeah, the, the person that continues to follow their feelings will be a grown, bitter individual by the time they die. You know why? They're focused on this. They're focused on this. But, oh, my God, I wonder what would happen if somebody here tonight begins to focus on the long-term things of this world that you can live for millions of years for the rest of your life like this. You know, like that young lady over there, Nancy's daughter, 20, 20, uh, 21 years old, something like that. And, you know, I was talking to her last night, and the Holy Spirit wanted me to help her out a little bit because I know exactly where she's at. And it's a critical period of her life. She's here right now. She's here somewhere in her 20s. And the world has a way of trying to bring and lure you to these things and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, yeah, over here your friends are having fun, but you're over here going to church. You're over here going to college and graduating with a, a missionary degree. And you're over here doing all that, but look at your friends having fun. They don't, your friends don't have an eternal perspective on things. You do. Because let me tell you one more thing before I continue. What you do in this period, what you do in this period, can you say that with me? What, what, what I do in this period will reflect what you do in this period. So why worry about this? Oh, I'm not traveling enough. Oh, I'm not getting enough money. Oh, this. Oh, my son doesn't call me. My daughter doesn't do this. Why are you worried about this when you got a whole lifetime of millions of years ahead of you? Because if you're just focused about this, it indicates that you have a self-sufficient, self-made, selfish mentality. But when you're focused on this, in other words, you know what, Eddie, I want to change my focus. How do I do this? Okay, I'm going to get there. But you have these millions of years that are coming to you. And what you do in these years for the Lord 
will reflect over here later on in the new heavens and the new earth. What you do over here, once you're over here, once you cross that line, once you go six foot under, your test is over. Once you die, once the rapture comes, once uh, that movie left behind, once all that happens, it's over. The test is over. Now, what's over here is what you earned over here. The rewards are coming. Why don't you focus more on having an eternal perspective over here so that the stress, so that the little things in life that steal your peace and your joy won't be so astronomically high because if you focus on this, these little things, oh, I didn't get my way over here, I didn't get my way over there, are going to be nothing. Keep an eternal focus, my brother. Yeah. Hey. One thing you can do to increase your eternal perspective is we have a seminar coming. We have sold more or less like 100 tickets. The seminar is coming on November 8th. This is something you can do over here that's going to help you over there. It's an addiction freedom seminar. And tonight only, everybody that buys five tickets will get a free T-shirt. Give it to somebody that needs it. You don't know what they're going through. Bring them even if they're not addicted to anything. We're going to speak the word of God over here. But if for five tickets, you're going to get a free T-shirt. And this is a way that you can help the ministry. We've got, we got a little goodie surprise for you when I'm done. I want to show you guys. But this is a, a little surprise that you can uh, give to somebody. You're blessing somebody. Today, I went and I blessed three people today. Surprisingly. Let me just go and show up in this person and bless them with that. Let me show up in this person. Let me bless them with this. It's amazing how you feel when you're blessing somebody and you take your eyes off of yourself. It's amazing how you feel when you're like, ah, you know, I didn't like my son getting that tattoo. But you know what? Ah, it's okay. Shake it off. Forward. Let me bless somebody anyway. Let me bless somebody anyway. And so five tickets get you a, a, a free T-shirt. Bless somebody and start having your kingdom perspective increased. It's not about you. Bless somebody. This, what I'm speaking about today, is in chapter 9 of my book. Finishing what you started. Another way you can bless the kingdom, and another way you can bless this ministry, and another way you can focus on the eternal perspective on things. You want to reach to that point when you cross that, that part of your life that God Almighty says, Come here, my son. Come here, my daughter. Job well done. Good job, good and faithful servant. Thank you for serving in, in, in the ministry. Thank you for expanding the kingdom. Thank you for blessing people. Thank you for giving. Thank you for making it not about you. Not only are you going to feel so wonderful over here, but you're also going to be getting blessings over there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we focus so much on what the world sees instead, but not on what God's watching. And God wants us to focus on things like that. The, this is an, the, what I just mentioned is another way of storing treasures in heaven that I want to talk about. Amen? Now, seven ways on how to stay focused and to stay productive and live with a life in purpose. Number one, you ready? Can you guys give me some excitement? You guys ready? Number one. Limit the unnecessary multitasking responsibilities. <laughs> How many of you are multitaskers? Okay. Here's another question for you. Has that been very successful? <laughs> My point exactly. Life is too short to allow ourselves to become con continually going back and forth with things like that. Number one, limit the unnecessary multitasking responsibilities. Look at what Apostle Paul 
wrote in Philippians 3.12. He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Number 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal, not the multitasking, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. When you multitask, you split your focus. When you multitask, instead of concentrating on the job at the moment, you split your focus. And I'm, by the time we're done with these seven, I know one thing for sure. I feel it in my spirit tonight that when you walk out those doors, you're going to be a much better focused person in your job, in your marriage, in whatever God has for you. I know he is. He's going to give you this laser beam focus. There's a, there's a little laser beam at the end of this thing. It's going to be laser beam. Laser beam focus. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you tonight. Not, uh, not that you're doing everything all wrong, but you're just a little bit too busy and not laser beam focused. You need to remove some of these distractions. Now, Everyone who has ever run a race, how many of you have ever ran a race? I know I ran track a few times. Okay, good. When you've ran a race, the, the person that's in first place should just continue to focus on the finish line. I've seen a lot of times. I've won races when I was in second or third place, and I'm coming, but I see the guy in front of me. One thing I noticed that when the guy's in front of me and they're focused on finishing the race, it gives me a signal like, man, this guy is so focused, I might as well just end in second or third place. But when I see the guy doing this, <laughs> I got him. I got him. They're losing focus because they're not running the race, moving straight on like they should. When you're multitasking, whether you're, let's, see, let, 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 let's say you're doing this all at one time, you're texting. You're cooking, you're watching a TV or a radio program, 10, 15 a.m. on a Monday morning. Your child is in the bathtub. You're doing all of these in a sub-excellent way, but you're not doing this in a structured way and in an excellent way. And so what happens is, who knows if your cooking is going to be that good? Who knows if you're really going to absorb that message that's being preached at 10, 15 a.m.? Who knows if your child in the bathtub is a little bit too long in the bathtub and they get an ear infection because water is getting in. Things like this happen because we lose focus. I'm not saying don't multitask, but let's say your child's in there, your three-year-old is in the bathroom and you're cooking and you're, you're okay, honey? Yeah, okay, you can do things like that. But I'm talking about doing excess multitasking things that don't get you anywhere. You're busy. You're busy, but you're not hitting the bullseye. And so what happens is, I don't know about you, but I want to work smart. I don't want to work hard. I want to work smart. I, you know, I don't have a problem working. When I was a realtor, I was working 16 hours a day, and I did that for 23 consecutive days. I don't have a problem. Nobody outworks me in this ministry. But... I don't want to work stupid either. I don't want to work where I'm, my tongue is out because you're not following up with your responsibility. You're not being responsible with what you need to do. I don't want to work that hard. I don't want to have to repeat things to you three or four times because you don't want to follow directions. I, I don't want to work that hard. I want to work smart. I want to work efficient. I want to hit my target. I want to have as less problems as possible. But I don't want you to add problems to me. And, that, and what I'm trying to encourage you today is multitaskers don't get a lot done. Multitaskers don't get a lot done. Focus on your target. Number two, and how to stay focused and stay productive. Eliminate distractions by being disciplined. 
Look at what Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says. Looking. What does that word looking mean? When I went to, uh, that's a, that, that you're almost there, but not quite. When I said looking, hmm, let me go search this word. Looking means to look away from one thing to another. It means you're looking at this, but now you got to look at that to stay focused. And Hebrews says, the author of this book says, looking unto Jesus. We had a Bible study one time from the darkness, from moving from darkness to the light. Where we talked about the word unto. Unto means go under, submit, surrender. Surrender to his authority. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Strengthening our life while maintaining our focus is what I want you to have tonight. What distractions are in your life right now, my friend? What distractions are in your life right now that are keeping you from being focused? Your boss, your kids, your cell phone, your addictions, your notifications on your phone every time somebody replies to your Facebook. Your alerts. What's keeping you distracted? There's so many distractions. You know, give me five and just, just put it in your head somewhere. Five distractions that somehow steal your focus. Every, every time you get distracted, check this out. I was Googling this and researching this. Every time you're focused on something, every time you're focused on something, and you get distracted. Oh, yeah, Eddie. Oh, yeah, Eddie. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. And you go back to what you were doing, especially if it was like writing a letter, especially if it's like doing your bills, especially as, as like, you know, maybe following up on your child's homework. Every time you get distracted, it takes you at least seven to ten minutes to get reconnected in your mind again with the assignment that you were doing to begin with. You're losing valuable time. You're working harder every single time. Here's another one, number three, and how to stay focused and to stay productive and live with purpose. Prioritize the most important things in your life. In other words, important to most important. I mentioned to you the rope, the rope there. We're focused on the, the little things in this little thing called life when we have a lifetime ahead of us. Look at what Matthew 6.33 says. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. A lot of us in the church... You know why we have lost our focus? You know why we have lost our hunger for God? Do you know why we get derailed with every little pony show that goes on in church? Because a lot of us are more excited, we're more, we desire more entertainment in the church as opposed to the revelatory word of God in the church. The word that really emphasizes you, that empowers you. We want that word, but no, we are focused on the pony rides, on the little uh, tattoo demo shows, on the entertainment that goes on in the church, as opposed, which is not going to change you, which is not going to transform you. This might change you. When, this little example that I'm giving you over here, this might change you. You won't forget that. You won't forget to keep an eternal perspective on things, but we're focused on the entertainment of the church, of the things that bring us a little laughter. Oh, how cute. Oh, how wonderful. How many of you are from Colombia? Yeah. How many of you are from Venezuela? Yeah. Stand up. Do three laps around the pool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll focus about the entertainment instead of revelation rema word that comes and changes and transforms you from the inside out. That you can speak with authority. That you can speak with boldness. That you can speak with courage. That you can live a life not like you're, you know, I know who's a Christian. You know how? When they have the joy of the Lord. 
That is the biggest, like, like the word I can see. Well, Eddie, I'm just not that joyful. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Psalm 1611, when you're in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And so if you don't have the joy of the Lord, something is leaking from you. You're not receiving the whole word or you're hanging on to please yourself rather to give him the glory. Something is not functioning in all full capacity in you when the joy of the Lord is not in you. When you're operating in self, you're losing focus somewhere. And tonight I hope you can get it back. You know, if God were to do this and pull the curtain from your life and allow us to see what he sees, you want to see? Here you go, child of God. If he were to allow us to see what he sees, you will realize that God knows exactly what he's doing. You will realize that this right here, it's no big deal. It's just a vapor. Life is just a vapor. It comes and goes got a lifetime ahead of you. You got millions of years ahead of you. But you're focused on the little things. I wish he can just show you that you are exactly where you need to be. But you need to make some changes so that you can have heaven on earth. You need to make some changes. You got to stop operating in self. You got to stop operating. Well, Eddie, it's not working for me. It's not working for you because you're doing it your way. When you do it God's way, then it starts to work. Because we either believe this thing with all that we got in us, or we don't. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. The, the heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. What else can we say here that will keep us focused and stay focused and stay productive? Number four, write your goal and your visions and your things to do. Write them down. Habakkuk 2.2, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. My brother, my sister, whatever you focus on, you steer towards that. You want to focus on your past relationship, you're going to stay going around the circles, around the wilderness like, Mo like Moses and the, and the Israelites because you're not focused on where you need to be. Whatever you put your focus on, that's where you're going to go. You want expectation of something? There is no expectation if there's no focus. I want to go here. Well, you know what? Anchor yourself to go there. And you will hit the bullseye every single time. Have you seen these dogs that they're hunting? The, the hunter, who likes hunting here? Anybody? Any weirdos like hunting here? Like, okay, 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 sorry, bro, I don't mean that. Uh, I've never done it, but I want to do that one day. When you take a dog hunting, and the dog is focused on going after their, the whatever animal that you're trying to hunt, rabbits. Let's go for rabbits. Oh, yeah, I look like Elmer Fudd, so you might as well use a rabbit. All right. Hey, let's go for rabbits. The dog is not concerned with the fleas that's carrying in on his, back, on his back. The dog, a good dog that wants to hunt, he's going after that, whatever it is, the hot pursuit of something, he's going after it. He's not worried about the little annoyances that are going on in his back. He's focused on getting his prey. He's not focused on the fleas. If you, as a child of God, are focusing on the fleas rather than focusing on the target. 
You need to make a shift in your mind. I don't know what it is that God wants you to do. But all I know is one thing. He does have plans for you. He does have purposes for you. He does want you to prosper in everything, in your soul, in your marriage, in your finances. You know, it, the, the more I embrace this thing, the more beat up I get, which is okay because it means my flesh is being crucified. But the more I receive this thing, the less of Eddie is in me and the more of God comes out of me. And the beautiful thing, glory to his name, is that the more I receive of him and the more I ow die of me, the more fulfilled, happy, joy, and peaceful I get. But those that don't want to die never truly live. Those that don't want to die, that don't want to crucify their flesh, crucify their pride, crucify their ego, crucify whatever the Lord is trying to let. He wants you to lay it down at the altar like he did with the tabernacle, that you walk in through the altar, then you wash your hands, then you go into the Holy of Holies. You know, whatever you're not willing to leave at the altar will bring you stress. Whatever you don't surrender will bring you stress. Whatever you don't surrender will bring you stress. But every time you die to self, it will bring you life. Because God, the Spirit of God, is life. But we're focused on self. We don't want to die. And therefore, we truly never live. We will die in the natural. We will die in the natural. And then when all those years come, I don't know how you're going to feel in heaven that says that there's not going to be no tears, no pain. But you're probably going to be saying a couple of times, you know what, I should have done more over here for the God. I should have honored my word. I should have done this. I should have been a better husband, better wife. I should have done this right. You know, whatever it is, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go. I don't want to be in the middle of that rope somewhere and say, you know, if only I would have done that over there. No regrets. I don't, don't, don't want to live with any regrets. I want to live clean, clean, clean. So focus your shift and stop focusing on your fleas. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Number five, resist procrastinations and bad habits. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind. That means set. Well, I'm going to set it right here because I know I'm going to be tempted over there. But my mind is set. Oh, it is not easy. I know it's not. The only thing we really need to do is set our minds and resist. If you really do those two things, you set your mind and you resist, you will pass the test that God's been giving to you, but you're not passing them. You need to stay in faith. You need to stay focused. Look, don't push so much pressure on yourself when you're doing this. Change your tune from I must to I should. And think of the possibilities and the final outcome rather than the cost. A lot of times when I go to the gym, I don't want to go to the gym. But I focus on how I'm going to feel when I'm leaving the gym. So my thoughts change from, I don't feel like going to the gym. I feel like having a hog and dogs ice cream. I just feel like being in bed right now. But I want to go to the gym because I know that when I leave that gym, I'm going to feel like a conqueror. And that's why I say, okay, let's do this again. One more time, let's do the gym. Even yesterday, I've been sick for a week. Last week was a miracle that I even preached last week. But I still am like probably 95% here, you know, pretty much. But I'm still coughing and stuff. But yesterday, I couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, it's been six, seven days I haven't gone to the gym. I'm going no matter what. And I played some basketball. I was coughing while I was playing. And then afterwards, I have a nice bath with uh, some of uh, Giselle over there who gave me some idea about uh, uh, when you're having a little cough issue, put some honey and some sea salt and gargle, and uh, it has a little uh, whatever uh, ancient history secret there that they takes the bacteria away and whatnot. And I'm like, wow, I'm not coughing anymore, and I haven't coughed that much today. So that's a good remedy to have. These two I really want you to, have to focus on, the, these last two that I'm going to give you. 
Because these last two are really going to make a difference in your life. Out of these seven that are there, in my opinion, these are the, these are the two that are most critical. Number six, in ways on how to stay focused, to stay productive. Create flow and momentum by blocking quiet set times. That word blocking, let me tell you what I mean. Every time my phone rings, and it's ringing all day, and I don't answer it anymore, so don't call me. I get, like, I don't know, about 50 calls a day, and if I were to answer them all, I wouldn't even prepare for the Bible study tonight. So what do I do? Like your emails, let's use your emails or Facebook. I, I put on my account, I put on Facebook, this is what I've been doing now. I go one hour on Facebook, ding, timer. I'll be one hour on Facebook. Let me answer all the inboxes that come in. Let me reply to some of the comments. Let me post something. Let me witness them on Facebook. Let me do what I got to do. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 55 minutes. I'm about to finish on Facebook. Boom, one hour is gone. Facebook goes out the door. Now, here's the thing. I don't have no notifications when somebody answers on Facebook. Now comes the next, next subject. I need to block 30 minutes to answer all my emails. Ready? Go. Boom. Started answering all my emails. I don't go all throughout the day. Uh, I'm driving. Oh, email over here. Do, 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 do. Uh, no. no. Hey, did you get my email? No. Uh, uh, where is it? I send it to you. I go, I'll read it when that moment comes. Because if I were to be distracted, hey, what's up, Larry? Hold on, Larry. Don't you hate this? Hey, what's up? We're having a conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? Oh, okay, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like watching your emails and stuff. How could I give Larry, how could I give Maria, how could I give Kendra, how could I give people my undivided attention and then give this person who sent me an email my best response? Another thing. You're, you're, I'm preparing for Bible study. You're preparing for your work, whatever it is at your work. Oh, let me go get a bagel. Let me put on the music. Let me uh, work over here for what my boss wants me to do. And then you're like, bagel. Hey, what the, oh, oh, what did they say on the radio? Oh, oh. And, and you're focused on all these things, not giving attention to nothing. And so all of a sudden, your spirit of excellence, like Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, King Nebuchadnezzar and the whole army there, they admired Daniel because he carried with him, with him a spirit of excellence. You want to do everything that you do with focus and a spirit of excellence. You want to reply to that person the best way that you can possibly reply. And so you're there. You're texting them, okay, now it's time to reply on the text. Now it's time to do this, now it's time to do that. Um, working out, I don't, I'm not going to answer my phone when I'm working out. Oh, I'm working out, do, do, oh, hold on for a second. You got to tell your workout partner, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now you're distracted. Now you're getting cool. You're not really functioning and burning body fat distracted. You're in church. It's not time to reply to the Texas. Uh, I see when everybody is texting. Just because, just because I don't say nothing doesn't mean I didn't watch you. I know when you've been texting and I know when you're writing notes. There's a difference. I know. Whatever you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing, your, product, your productivity, you want to get that raise? You want to get a bonus? Your productivity is attached to your focus. You want to lose weight? Okay, you got to get focused. I got to eat this. I got to plan my meals. I got to eat every three to four hours. I got to do what I got to do. You know, when I go preach, I'm prepared. I, 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 wherever they invite me, I want to give my spirit of excellence. I don't just want to wing it. 
I don't just want, like, last week I had to preach in downtown. And, and the lady was like, wow, man, what a, great, what a great service. But I was preparing the night before. I didn't go there and wing it. Well, I've done this before. Let me just do what I got to do and then you know, just get my little offering and just leave. No. At that time, everything waits. Everything waits. It's about the spirit of excellence in you. Have that mind thoughts that, that you're, you're, you won't lose. And you want me to tell you something? You're going to have more energy that way. Whatever it is that you got to do, cooking time, you want to devote you. Here's a good one. Your prayer time and reading the word. In the morning for 30 minutes, nobody can get a hold of me. If it's an emergency, I will find out sooner or later. 30 minutes ain't going to happen. You know, and in the morning, I block my phone. Unless you come to the door and knock on my door, I will be distracted there, but nothing will interrupt me if my quiet time with my Lord. Can you devote that to him? Well, let me, let me pray. Let me hear a little worship music. But while I'm hearing worship music, I'm going to reply to these texts. Yeah. No. Give him your all. Quality time. He wants you to love him in spirit and in truth with all your mind and all your heart. Number seven, to wrap it up on how to stay focused, to stay productive. Number seven, give yourself regular breaks to get re-energized. Here's the thing that I want you to really understand. Remember I told you these last two. Uh, actually, the first one, which is don't multitask, because people that multitask don't work smart. They, they don't work very smart. They work hard. You want to work smart. Get the most done with the least time. The one before that is block your calendar for 45 minutes. Students, you got to do a little uh, report in school. You're getting distracted from your boyfriend. You're getting distracted from the phone calls. Uh, you're, you're distracted. You got to do this project. Got to write this term paper. And you're doing all these things, but you're getting distracted. You got the TV on. Mama's calling you over here. Yeah. Do this. Do this, students. 45 minutes to an hour, block the whole world. Do what you got to do in those 45 minutes to an hour. Do it. Do it. Do it. When you're done with that 45 minutes to an hour, you know what you do? Break time. Take a 5 to 10 minute break. Don't keep on. Don't keep on. Because what happens is you keep on, you get tired. The eyes get fatigued. You're not taking a break. Take a five to ten minute break. Go eat a bagel. Go get some fresh air. Reply to a couple of texts. Then come back to your stuff again. Another 45 to, to, to an hour. Do that for a week. You're going to see how much more productive you're going to be. But take those little baby breaks of five to ten minutes. Even if it's right there in your, in your, in your, in your cubicle or wherever. Take them so you can stay focused. 15-minute nap like I do sometimes. Go, take a, uh, go to the bathroom. Whatever you got to do in those 5 to 10 minutes. And so, in conclusion, what does focus mean? F for faith. <coughs> o for be obsessed with it. Block the calendars of things that you got to do. C, clarity. U, unhindered. No interruption. No distraction. And S, sacrifice yourself to stay focused. Maximize your time and be as productive as you can possibly be. With all heads bowed and eyes closed. I'd like to take a brief moment to say that if this ministry has inspired you in any way, shape, or form, I'd like to ask you to consider and pray about sowing a donation or an offering towards it. The money used will be to improve our broadcasts that are being brought to you, to impact the kingdom of God further, and to help those that are walking in bondage and captivity be rescued, renewed, and restored. Another way you could cooperate to the ministry is by purchasing my book, Blessed, Balanced, and Complete, which will encourage you to rise higher in your Christian faith. Simply visit the link provided there on your screen for more information.
Anybody that has not received Jesus, we're all family. We're all.